Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we have a very cool sort of trials or experimental pattern Mosin Nagant to take a look at. And we have this rifle, courtesy of the Mosin Crate. Uh, tell you a little bit more about them at the very end of the video. But a uh, big thanks to Alden there for sending this over as a loaner for me to film. What we have here is, as you can see, a folding bayonet version of the Mos Nagant that is actually an intermediate length. So uh, when the Soviet Union went into World War II, they did so with the Model 9130, which is a couple inches longer than this guy. And during the course of the war they adopted a pair of carbine configurations, actually the M38 first, and then the M44, the M44 adding a folding bayonet. And you can see that this guy is a little longer than an M44. This was developed starting in 1944 with the idea of being a universal replacement for the most Nagant rifles that were then in service. The idea being the standard rifle was a little too long, and the bayonet for that thing is really an awkward pain. It's a big long spike bayonet, it's awkward to carry on the belt, but it makes the gun really long if you keep it on the gun. There's no convenient way to store it. In fact, they experimented with putting a folding bayonet on a full length version of the rifle. We had a video on that uh, not too long ago. Check that one out at the end of this if you haven't seen it. But in 44 they got the idea that maybe that short little carbine is a little too short, a little too much blast, a little too much recoil to be something that they could issue across the board to everybody. So let's experiment with an intermediate length. And it's probably not a coincidence that this is almost identical in length to the German Car 98K or the World War I Car 98 AZs. There was sort of this intermediate standard, sort of called a short rifle length, that almost all countries in the world kind of came to the conclusion of by by the time they had a couple World Wars worth of experience under their belt uh, with bolt-action full-power rifles. So uh, this is not, in fact, a converted standard Mosin. Let's take a look at it up close and I'll show you how we know that. Let's start with a quick look at the markings. We have the typical uh, Soviet crest up there, a few of the typical proof and refurb marks. This particular rifle, in fact all of these, were manufactured uh, by Ishevsk in 1945. So we have a 1945 date right up here. On the side of the receiver we have an American import mark. This was imported by Century, and it is labeled M44 because uh, it appears that they didn't realize that they had something special on their hands when they got a few of these in uh, with regular M44 carbines. These apparently came out of Bulgaria. Uh, or they just didn't care, or for whatever reason uh, they're marked M44. I do not know what the official designation of this rifle was for the Soviet Union. Uh, in US collector community it's taken on the, term, the parlance of M44L for 44 long, so we'll go ahead and use that uh, because that's the term that's already in common use. The receiver here is round and it has the high sidewall. These are indicative of late war production. Um, this is, as I said, this is not a refurbed or uh, converted rifle. So if we compare this to a standard M44 uh, back here, this is actually a Chinese version but they're mechanically identical to the Russian ones, you can see that the 44L has the same uh, shortened rear sight, it goes out to a thousand meters, as opposed to the 2000 meter rear sight of the original 9130s. But if I put these all side by side here, you can see that the sling slot in the 44L doesn't line up with the same location in either of the other patterns. If this was a stock cut down from one of these, the sling slot would be up about here. And well obviously it's not cut down from a shorter stock. But if it were based on a shorter stock but extended, well same issue, you'd have the sling slot back here. So this is a purpose built from the factory original gun. The bayonets are of the exact same style and design, but they're not interchangeable. As you can see the 44 is about an inch shorter than the 44L bayonets. Just a couple other little details to point out. Note that there is not a, a little finger relief behind the rear barrel band here. As was standard for Mosins, interestingly, the finger groove on the right side is actually set slightly farther back. Notice how the recoil lug here, recoil bolt, isn't quite at the end of the groove. Well on the other side it is, so this is intended 
uh, for someone to hold with their right hand, presumably, where the thumb goes up in there, and the fingers are a little bit farther back. And it's also cool to note that this is actually a completely matching gun. So the serial number is 3124 there, which we also have everywhere else. The bolt handle, stamped into the buttstock, on the butt plate, and on the magazine floor plate. Like on the M44s, the bayonet is considered a permanent fixture, so it's not serialized separately. In theory, you could remove it. Uh, you'd have to start by driving out that pin, and then you could take the thing off, but it's not intended to be removable. And of course I should point out how the bayonet actually works. We have a spring-loaded sleeve here. Pull that forward to unlock it from the bayonet lug, and then it's going to rotate out which is always a hassle with camera tripods and such. And when you get to the front, it will snap over the muzzle and lock itself in place. And there is your M44L spike bayonet. The idea was to issue these as universal infantry rifles, replacing long guns and carbines, but this schedule didn't really work out, because Germany had the nerve to surrender, and the war in Europe to end before they had a chance to really go through with this plan. So uh, the initial order for these consisted of a thousand guns of this configuration for the infantry, and very interestingly also 200 of them without bayonets, but still this intermediate length, and fitted with scopes for sniper use. That would be an extremely cool one to find. I'm not aware of, like I've never even seen pictures of one of those, but theoretically those were ordered and produced. We don't know how many they made in total. Um, it may not have been more than that initial order, but it may have been several thousand more. If we consider the folding bayonet full-length rifles, we're talking like 22 and a half thousand of those were made in total for troop trials. So there may be more of these, but what ended up happening was, with the war over, there was no real impetus to, to do something like this. Development instead turned to self-loading and automatic firearms, like the SKS and the Kalashnikov. And these were basically crated up and then given off as military aid to allies. So uh, this one came out of Bulgaria. You saw it's actually marked, it's import marked as an M44, uh, a short little carbine just like this. It would be very interesting to me. I don't know how Century originally sold these. Uh, if they even realized there was a substantial difference or that they had something special. It would be very interesting to me if there are more of these floating around out there that some people have and don't even realize they've got something special because they just ordered an M44 and this is what they got. And it's marked M44, so that must be what it is. Anyway, uh, that's a, a little side note on the vagarities of import marking, which is not always all that accurate. Anyway, um, it's extremely cool to get a ch uh, chance to take a look at this one. This is the first one of these I've actually seen in person, and they are extremely rare, both here in the US and everywhere. So a big thanks, as I said at the beginning, to the Mosin Crate for loaning me this rifle to bring to you guys on camera. Uh, if you're interested in inter interesting surplus firearms, definitely check out his YouTube channel. He covers a lot of neat stuff that he gets access to. So I'll have a link to his channel in the description below and make sure to check out the uh, previous video I have on the 43 Simmon pattern uh, full-length rifle with the folding bayonet. Thanks for watching.